I used to think my job was all about arrests, chasing bad guys. Now I see my work differently. We analyze crime data, spot patterns, and figure out where to send patrols. It's helped some U.S. cities cut serious crime by up to 30% by stopping it before it happens. So interesting. It's an advertisement for IBM, but it highlights a new trend. So with cash-strapped state budgets and police departments have to do more with less, you've heard it all, cops and nerds have joined forces to prevent crime before it starts. There's a new technology called predictive policing. It relies on these sophisticated computer analyses of past crimes to help police departments deploy cops more effectively, efficiently, to prevent future crimes. And it's actually working. In a Los Angeles precinct where predictive policing has been used, property crime dropped 13% in a six-month time frame. And when the technology was rolled out in Santa Cruz, the number of burglaries dropped over the year by 26%. So I was fascinated by this. And joining me now to discuss how big data is making police departments smarter is Zach Friend. He is a former crime analyst with the Santa Cruz Police Department, and he's now the city's newly elected county supervisor, probably elected because of your success in reducing crime. Zach, thanks so much for joining us inside the War Room. Thanks. It's an honor to be here. All right. So let's talk about this technology. Exactly how does it work? Well, it works in a very similar way to how we predict earthquake aftershocks. I mean, as you know, when you have an earthquake, there are predictable aftershocks. And it turns out when you have crime, there are predictable aftercrimes associated with it. So what the algorithm does is it just simply lets officers know when and where a crime will occur. Now, it kind of sounds like science fiction. It does. We, I know, but we've been able to show that it's more like science fact. Now, people are looking at the screen now. They're seeing a, a, a square block. Tell us, tell us about that. So what the, what the algorithm provides are 500 foot by 500 foot zones, these little square, red square blocks that our officers then go patrol. It doesn't tell them what to do. It doesn't replace their intuition. It doesn't do any of those things. It just simply helps focus their efforts into a, into a new area. And that area was determined based upon the crimes that had happened there over the past how long? Well, it depends. I mean, in, in the case of Santa Cruz, it was over the last 11 years. I mean, more heavily weights recent crimes. But what's interesting about it is it's very difficult for a person to see patterns that long. And it's very difficult for a new officer to have the history or intuition. This puts everybody on the same playing field, allows to equal sort of the results across the force. So, so I'm a police officer, and I get something that tells me I've got to go to this block, this 500 square foot place, because we know that crime is likely to happen there. That's and right. my physical presence there, them seeing me, will deter that crime from happening. That's right. And that's caused the crime to drop in Santa Cruz and in other places. That's right. So how much? So this is all software. Yes, that's right. It's all web-based, so it doesn't it doesn't really cost any kind of you know exorbitant amount for our team. So, how, so I'm a police department. I'm a yeah. police chief. I hear about this, and I want to reduce my crimes. Uh, how much is it going to cost me? Well, it should be about the cost of a of a crime analyst or so. Definitely even less normally. So it's all web-based, and, and the, this is what we face in Santa Cruz. We had a 30 percent increase in calls for service in the last decade, with a 20 percent decline in staff. We knew we weren't going to get, the federal government's uh -huh. drastically cut federal funding for cops. I mean, if you look at the cops right, programs. Right. And so how do you, if you can't put more people on the street, what are you going to do? We looked into a way to leverage technology to do exactly that. So this is a, it's, the actual software is called predictive policing. That's right. Is Pred, that right? PredPol for sure. PredPol. So is there a potential to launch this across the country? Is this something that bigger yes. police departments, Santa Cruz is sort of small, is bigger police departments could use as well? Well, we've shown that it works in Santa Cruz, which has about 100 police officers. We've shown that it works in Los Angeles, which has about 10,000 police officers. And there are now about a dozen agencies throughout the country that have started to implement it. Now, we did it specifically for property crime, burglary specifically, but we have since expanded it out to violent crime, including gun-related crime. Well, tell, tell me about that, because we're talking about guns uh, right here. How can this reduce gun-related crime, which is often a crime of you know, passion in some ways. Well, it turns out it isn't necessarily, actually. A lot of gun-related crime, and the professors that developed this model ran these tests 
with Chicago police and found that it was twice as accurate as what they were currently doing in predicting where gun crime would occur. Similar with gang crime. A lot of these have sort of a action-reaction kind of association with it, meaning that there's an act of gang violence in one location, there's a retaliatory action in another location. That's how they can use the algorithm to apply to gang-related violence as well as gun-related violence. So, so I'm, I'm fascinated by the difference between this and something called, um, what is it, CompStat, yeah. right? Which is uh, something that's been used over the past couple of decades to do something similar. What's the difference? Is this another, the latest version? Is it more updated? Is it more real-time? I think it's a lot of those things. I mean, Comstat's clearly better than doing nothing, and, and I think people would be surprised how few agencies in the country, especially small agencies, are really doing any kind of analytics at all. But it's very reactive. It exclusively just looks at past data and assumes that all future crimes will occur where those past crimes have occurred. And this is much more sophisticated then. Just because you had five crimes occur within some sort of block, it doesn't mean the sixth crime is going to necessarily occur there. Maybe it'll occur three blocks away. That's a significant difference between this program and other programs that are being used. Unbelievable. I, I think the idea of that it could cost as much as one person, yeah. even for a huge uh, police force, right? right? And that you could reduce crime by, you know, 30 percent. That's the a good use of technology. Appreciate you coming you inside the War Room, Zach, to make sure that people knew about it. We like to especially give those who are working in public service the notion that there are fixes to some things, or at least something that can help, especially cash-crunched areas. That's right. All Thank right. You. Zach Friend, former crime analyst with the Santa Cruz Police Department and newly elected supervisor, supervisor, That's right? Correct. Right, of Santa, Cla Santa Cruz County. Up next. S'mores for the progressive campfire, popcorn for the political junkie, tasty tidbits for the left of center palate. What we like to call the best of the rest. And after all that, what we like to call Brett Ehrlich. Coming up, Congress is at war over Twitter followers. Don't go away. <laughs> 